anybody that wants a book, we are willing to share our books. We'll get you another book if, if those of us that have them want to keep them. Um, please put your name on the sheet if you're interested in finding out more information or if you want to do some of these things listed, we'll connect you with whatever information is needed. Um, and Pastor Dan mentioned the, the prayer groups on Monday night. It's really a good time, honestly, and it's not just a little filling up here and there, but it's, it's friendships built. But it's more than anything else, it's praying for all the others that are not only in this community or this congregation, but it's others that people have connections to out, outside of the area. Um, and prayer is so, so necessary, and we all know that. It's just a little bit harder to always do. So I encourage you to be part of this, um, even if it's just on the forum and they'll connect you. You can write a note of encouragement. There, were, I, I don't know how many volunteers there were this weekend, but. I'll bet you it's close to 100. Maybe it wasn't, but it felt like it when you're here. Uh, and it was all cleaned up by 1.30, and it just showed how many people can be a part of something really good. So just keep it up and um, talk to one of them. Thanks. Thank you. I, I, had a, I gave the book to a friend of mine uh, 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 lives in the community, and, and he texted me this past week. He said, I read the book that you said. He said it was probably one of the best books I've read to talk about the necessity and, and the importance of being invested and involved in the church. So uh, it is, and it's a very easy read, it's very short. Uh, and speaking of prayer, uh, we, we want to lift up um, some, some people this morning before we begin worship. Uh, Paul Weingartz, um, I have a note that was written, uh, Lois talked to, to Bonnie this past week, and um, she said that, that, uh, that, that Paul has reacted to the blood treatments of blood transfer um, transfusions uh, so, that, so that his body is kind of broken out and is ca causing a, a bit of a setback and a bit of discouragement for him. So we need to continue to pray for Paul. We need to continue to pray. The stem cell uh, was doing well. Uh, but uh, uh, we don't know what this blood is, how this is affecting it. So this just encourage you to be praying for them uh, and pray that, uh, that the reactions of the new blood will, will, uh, will start to settle down and, and he'll be able to, to uh, get back on his feet and get back moving again. He, I encourage us to send cards, uh, to send notes. I know that the ladies are sending a, uh, a little care package to them. Uh, this week we'll be going there with that. But I really think that you, and if you want to be involved financially with them, I buy script cards uh, for gas, uh, for uh, food, whatever, uh, because that will be an encouragement to them. So just be praying for, the, for, that, for him uh, and for Bonnie. I'll also be praying for uh, Charlie Dundas. Charlie had broke his knee uh, about a little over a week ago, and he is now in... Uh, in um, facility for rehab, uh, be praying for him in Pathstone, be, be praying for him as he continues to recover from the loss of his wife and now uh, uh, broken knee. I saw him this past week, he's in good spirits, uh, but um, obviously in pain. Um, and then Shirley Beatty, uh, who I saw wandering around, is she here this morning? Shirley uh, was wandering uh, around at the clinic on uh, Thursday when I was there and, and she's moving quite well for having uh, a, a broken hip. hip. Yeah, broken hip. So be praying for her as she continues to recover and for, for uh, Delaney as well. And then Sharon Adams is still uh, waiting to find out what's going to happen to her. Be praying for her as well as they continue to decide what they're going to do with that, uh, with that growth that is uh, causing some issues in her. Well, you know, so why don't we just take a moment. And by the way, good to see you this morning, Kevin. Um, Kevin is here, and that means a good sign because that means his heart is doing what it's supposed to be doing. So, good to have you here. Let's pray. Father, I believe with all my heart, uh, as Lois said, that there is power in prayer. Uh, I believe, God, that, that lives are changed, uh, uh, experiences are, are refreshed and renewed, uh, relationships are healed. Lord, I believe that, that we as a church could spend a lot more time in prayer, and it would be a good thing. So this morning, as we come into your presence, we come into your presence this morning thinking about 
Uh, cele celebrating the fact that, that Kevin uh, is here, his, his heart is, is back kind of to where it should be. I pray you continue to bring healing there. I pray, Father, for, uh, for Charlie Dundas as he um, continues to heal from a, a broken knee and, and a broken heart from the loss of his wife. I pray, Father, as well, that you'll be with Sharon as she waits to find out what the future holds for her. Thank you for the healing that is taking place in, uh, in Shirley's uh, life. Lord, I pray you continue to give her strength. And uh, Delaney, who has struggled um, with, uh, with the process of aging, Lord, I pray you be with him as well. But Lord, I want to pray in particular for Paul this morning. Um, God, good news and then bad news. Two steps forward, one step back. One step forward, two steps back. Lord, it's going to be difficult for both Paul and for Bonnie. And Lord, I just pray that you would be with them in a, in a special sort of way. And that they might know that we as a church are praying for them. That they might know that, that God is with them in the midst of all this. We just give them to you this morning and ask that your, your love and your grace would surround them. Even, even this day. Lord, you are the great physician. You provide in ways that sometimes we don't even acknowledge. We pray, Lord, this morning that you would lead us and guide us and keep us as we move forward in worship. In Christ's name, amen. Mark? Mark? <coughs> been talking about the importance of prayer and um, kind of just different things um, this week. There's a, as a prayer I want to share um, the words to a song and, and it's from Holy Spirit, um, I never say her name right, but it's by Francesca Battistelli. And when we talk about the importance of prayer and the importance of community, 
and inviting whatever we do in, in our hearts, in our communities, in our families. It's the invitation of the Holy Spirit into our lives. And when we trust and invite and believe, that's when the miracles and the exciting things that happen. So will you take a moment and be in prayer with me this morning as I share these words of prayer. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, by your presence here, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Lord, we ask in this time and place for your Spirit to be here. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill our hearts. Fill our minds. Fill our souls with your glory. Come and be a part of this community for each and every one. For us to reach out in love as we reach out and seek the babe in the manger. Lord, come and fill us here. Let us see the glory of your presence. Lord, may we experience your light and your love this day. And may the spirit which you give to us be the spirit of light in which we reach out to others. Lord, we lift this prayer up, all the prayers that we have talked about, and we lift them up as one voice as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time I invite you all to stand as we begin with our opening chorus, Here I Am to Worship. <laughs> and um, I want to clarify a little bit how this goes, because it's new to some of you. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> and we're having a little trouble getting things to line up right on the screen the way they're supposed to. If you notice, the words are in your bulletin, and the way the song goes, we sing verse 1, then the chorus, then verse 2, then the chorus, then the bridge, and then the chorus. So just keep in mind, whenever you finish anything else, go back to the chorus, okay? <laughs> All right, we'll see when we get, our, get through this. Oh, man. 
and family this morning for our Advent reading and lighting of the candles. From John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. It's Christmas, the time to reflect on the gift of Christ's birth. God became man so that we, his created, might have the hope of his forgiveness. Have you seen any evidences of Christ's birth as you begin to prepare for Christmas? Have you looked to see Christ in this Christmas? There's a lot of glitz and holiday spirit out there. Stores have, be- have been sharing the spirit of Christmas since the end of Halloween. We've just celebrated Black Friday and survived Cyber Monday, and Santa Claus has definitely come to town. But in the midst of all the celebrating, have you, have you been reminded of the birth of the Christ child? Yes, his presence is here, even in the hype of a season where we exploit the giving and receiving of gifts. I truly think that God joins in the excitement and is delighted with the celebration of his son's birth, but not all will recognize him in their celebrating. John said it well, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. John goes on to say he came to his own, but his own did not receive him. We can expect our world to be caught up in the season and not in the Christ. But what about us, those who identify with Christ? Have we been searching for the Christ, the one who we, the one who we claim as our light, the one who exposes darkness, the one we claim is the giver of hope and of life? Are we looking for this Christ and sharing the excitement of his birth in the midst of all the distractions? Christmas is a season of celebrating God coming into our world. God becoming flesh and dwelling among us. But are we focused on celebrating the hope of forgiveness he brings and acknowledging our future with him? The trimming of this Christmas tree is great, but only in the context of God's gift to us. Last week we lit the candle, reminding us of God's love for us from the beginning of time. Today we light the candle of hope as a reminder of why Christ came. Christ came 
came to demonstrate his love for us. Christ came to give hope. We will seek to fulfill God's desire for us. From 1 Chronicles 28.9 Maintain a relationship with God of your Father and serve him with a complete heart in all your thoughts and actions. The eternal searches all hearts for their desires and understands the intentions of every thought. If you search for him as he searches for you, then he will let you find him. But if you abandon him, then he will reject you forever. In the midst of our world, in the midst of this season, God is present and wants to celebrate with you. Let's be the presence of God in our world. Right, to the Faith We Sing book, uh, 20, uh, no, that's the wrong one, uh, 2100, and we're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. God just leave that down. Let's stand together. thinking about um, seeing Christmas in our world, seeing Christ in our world, uh, I I was pondering what scripture to use, and and I decided to come uh, with the passage that was read this morning, uh, another version of the Christmas story. It doesn't talk about a baby wrapped in swaddling clothing. It talks about a God who who set aside, set aside his deity to be dressed in the robes of humanity. And as I was thinking about uh, that concept of, of God becoming human, it dawned on me that God, Jesus, put on the robes of humanity and did everything that we did had to learn how to crawl, had to learn how to walk, had to learn how to talk, had to have his diaper changed, had to be fed. Jesus Christ came and he lived amongst us in total humanity. And he lived um, with the knowledge of who he was, but, but, but not necessarily being arrogant and, oh, look, I'm the Son of God but rather came and he just lived life. In fact, for basically 30 years of his life, we know very little about him. He lived as a human being. He discovered as a human being. He grew as a human being. And some of us may think that Jesus didn't have a sense of humor. Some of us maybe think that Jesus didn't party. 
But it's clear to me that when we look at the scripture, we see that the first, the very first miracle that Jesus Christ does is he changes water into wine. He takes a wedding ceremony, a celebration, and he says, and they, and they ran out of wine. And by the way, he didn't run out of wine on that day because wine was really a very important event, a part of that a celebration. And they'd run out of wine. Now, if I may just refer to my childhood, um, I grew up with the thought that, well, as a Baptist, it wasn't real wine, it was just really good grape juice. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little secret. Those Baptists are dumb. Because the wine that Jesus made was wine, and it was incredible. It wasn't Morgan David, it was, well, I don't know what the other ones are, but uh, it was a quality wine. And he knew that when he made the wine, there would be partying going on. And he even knew that some of those partiers were going to get drunk. I don't talk to my Baptist brothers and sisters about that, but he knew how to party. And he celebrated it. And so I, I, I brought that to the Christmas experience. And we look at our world today and, and we ask ourselves the question, well, what would Jesus do if he was living today and he saw what was going on in our world? Would he say, whoa, look at all that commercialism. Whoa, this is bad. Would he, would he be negative about the celebration of Christmas? Would he, would he be looking and saying, shame on us. Us materialistic, uh, over-the-top uh, people that, that, that forget uh, and, and just get into partying. I don't think Jesus would say that. I think Jesus would say, bring it on! Party hardy! Celebrate! Celebrate the birth of the Christ! Celebrate by sharing gifts with one another! Celebrate by putting some money in Salvation Army bucket! Celebrate by caring for people who don't have, as we do in our, here at the church. Celebrate! Give! Share! Enjoy. But I think the problem, and by the way, the, the, the scripture talks about the fact that he would come. And the song that we sang talks about he would come. And when he came, we wouldn't recognize him. You know, here's the God of creation, the God who made all of us, the God who put everything in place. That God shows up, and you would think that somewhere along the line, someone would go, oh, there's God. And honor him and celebrate him. But we ignored him. Just like the vast majority of people in our world today. Just like what has happened with Christmas. And that is that we've, we've ignored the purpose and the reason for Christmas and for the season. Now, and it's not wrong to party. It's not wrong to, to enjoy uh, what, uh, the, the season and, and enjoy families with, with the senior adults at uh, Oak Terrace. And I asked them to compare Christmas from the past to the Christmas of the present. It's a radical change. And yet there was one thing that came out for, for, on both sides, and that is it's a time of family. It's a time of coming together. It's a time of enjoying each other. I really think God really celebrates that. I really think God celebrates the fact that, that we come together, we celebrate together, we enjoy each other, we, we care and invest in each other, we care and invest in people who don't have. It's all part of the Christmas season. But what maybe concerns me is not so much that the world won't know who Christ is, but he also says, I came to my own and my own did not recognize me. Now, on that day, he came to the Jewish people, his people, and they didn't recognize who he was. And in fact, they scoffed, they scorned, and they finally put him on the cross. And then I thought to myself, well, that was true 20, uh, 2,000 years ago. How true is it today? We are the church, the body of Christ. And we celebrate the Christmas season, and we celebrate being family, and we celebrate uh, all these uh, different events, and all of that is good. 
But the challenge is, but where does Christ fit in to the season for you? Is he just a passing Christmas story? Is he just a lighted candle at the end of a Christmas Eve service of, of a silent night? Where does Christ fit into the celebration? You see, the celebrating is good. God doesn't want to take away the celebrating, but He's saying, but remember the purpose of the celebration. Remember that the purpose of the Christmas season is to acknowledge, to acknowledge that Christ was born under a star and He died on a cross. He was born to give life and light to the world, as the Scripture says. He was born to give us hope. He was born to demonstrate love. He was born to radically change our lives. But the end of his life ended hanging on a cross. I don't think we can think about Christmas and celebrating Christmas without celebrating the cross. Because you see, it's in the cross that we begin to understand the true meaning of Christmas. It isn't about a cute little baby in a manger in swaddling clothes that did no crying he made. That's a bunch of bunk. He cried a lot. I'm sure he did. Um, it wasn't about this cute little baby. It really was about the cross. And God wants us to party. And God wants us to celebrate the season. And God wants us to enjoy family. And God wants us to eat ludicrous. Oh no, that's wrong. That's not wrong. I'm sorry, that's a slip. Um, did I ever tell you that ludicrous is actually a, a, a Baptist fish? I, I know the Lutherans are going to be shocked to hear this. The Lutherans are going to be shocked because they serve it all the time. But the truth is, it's a Baptist fish. You know why it's a Baptist fish? Personal experience. There is only one way you can possibly swallow a swallow of lutefisk is if you baptize it in butter sauce or cream sauce. <laughs> That's his fish. Um, I'm sorry, that was a little, little squirrel moment. But, the, but, but, but what comes out of the experience is the fact that, that our world is living and they're, and, they're, and, they're, and they're celebrating they're celebrating an incredible holiday they're celebrating it of course we can't see Merry Christmas and we've got to say Happy Holiday but they are celebrating even if they don't know it they're celebrating the birth of the Christ the one who came to live and to die on the cross let's celebrate with them but let's also recognize in celebrating with them that we need to recognize the purpose of our celebration is Jesus Christ. And so when you meet as a family for Christmas, does Jesus get talked about? When we meet with, with friends at, at parties, are we conscious of the fact that God is there, that Christ is there, and that Christ is to be glorified? Jesus is in our world today. Christmas is happening around the world, amongst the Buddhists, amongst the Iranians, amongst uh, the, the Muslims, and, uh, amongst every faith in the world. Everybody celebrates Christmas in our world. They just don't know what it's about. But do we? And are we truly celebrating the birth of a Christ who came to die that we might be forgiven. Jesus came, and when he came, he came with the purpose of dying. One of the reasons why every month empty empty that's the reason why every month we commemorate or remember his death and even this morning as we move into the Christmas season we need to celebrate his death 
We need to celebrate the true meaning of Christmas. And, and so Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, on the night that he, he partied hearty with his disciples, and by the way, the Passover was a party. It was a celebration. They were partying together. And that night that he knew what he was going to do, he broke bread. And he said, this is my body broken for you. The core of the message of Christmas is this, is my body broken for you. And in like manner, after they had eaten together, he took the cup. It was one thing for him to talk about his body being broken, but it was another for, thing for him to say, and this is my blood that is poured out for you. Christmas is about Christ's body broken, Christ's blood shed. Christmas is about the celebrating of hope that has been given to us through the forgiveness of our sins because of Jesus Christ. So this Christmas season, as we share together in the bread and the cup, and by the way, all are welcome at this table. It's for all who would receive. As we celebrate His body broken, as we celebrate His blood shed, know this, you are celebrating Christ's birth. Let's give thanks for the bread and the cup. What an appropriate time of the, of the year to be, to be sharing in the bread and the cup. Because Christmas isn't about a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. Christmas is about his death and resurrection to give us a real reason to party. Lord, as we take and receive this bread and as we share in this cup, Lord, I pray that we would be reminded again this Christmas season that you are alive in our world, that you are present, that you have not gone anywhere. And you would cause us this Christmas season in the midst of the glitz and the glamour, in the midst of the partying, in the midst of the family gatherings, in the midst of the presence, that in the midst of all of that, it's all about you. May we celebrate, not as the world celebrates, but celebrate with an awareness of who you are. Thank you, Father, that you have given to us your body, you have given to us, you poured out your blood so that we could celebrate Christmas beyond Christmas on a Sunday morning after the Passover, the tomb in which held the body of Christ was rolled away and Christ arose so that we might really part forgiven. Thank you for your gift in Christ's name. Amen. And I'd like to invite those who are going to be serving this morning uh, to come forward to receive uh, the elements.
I invite you to go and proclaim Christ who has given to us the gift of life this Christmas season. Now go and serve. Believe it or not, we actually are going to use the hymnal this morning. Uh, we're going to close this morning uh, with uh, the singing of uh, Well Come All Ye Faithful, uh, page 234, verses 1, 2, and 6. As you're looking for the pages, i got a note. And I'm sorry, Carolyn, I should have mentioned it earlier. Carolyn Costa's father, um, Eldon uh, Jones, uh, from Lake Crystal, was uh, a healthy and active 90-year-old until he fell while... Uh, doing yard work in the late October after a month of, uh, of uh, various uh, complications and setbacks he was moved to Hillcrest Nursing Home on Wednesday to begin receiving hospice services. I really believe 
that the role that we have in relationship to life is to recognize that it begins and it ends. And that we need to be praying that God will graciously allow him to enter into his presence. And one of the ways that we can assist in that process is to be praying. So be praying for Elton, who has uh, turned from healthy 90-year-old to the end of his life. Thank you. Let's stand together and let's sing. Um, we'll come on your face. <laughs> of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go taking the Spirit with you. Go in celebrating Christ. Christ this Christmas. The Christ in us. And the Christ in the world around us. May you see his love in each person and in each place. Go now in the love and the grace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Hallelujah.